Hello, welcome back to our discussion of turbulence. We're looking at uh, definition, the definition of turbulence now, and we'll work our way into conceptual models. So, by definition, turbulence, according to uh, the glossary of meteorology, as it pertains to aviation, of course, it's a regular motion of the aircraft in flight. So, in other words, the airplane is bouncing up and down, and so are the passengers and everything else in the aircraft. Typically, it's caused, of course, by atmospheric uh, uh, variations in the uh, winds. But meteorologists tend to think of turbulence not so much as how it affects aircraft, but more what the wind is doing. And we like to think of the wind as flowing along nice and even, but then it breaks down and there are irregular fluctuations. And anything that is uh, deviating from the mean flow, uh, meteorologists tend to think of as turbulence. Turbulence is four-dimensional, meaning that you can have turbulence in the horizontal or lateral plane. So this would cause the aircraft to yaw. That's why aircraft have yaw dampers. Also, turbulence can happen in the vertical meaning that uh, updrafts and downdrafts. And this is the most common, and this is what typically is thought of as turbulence. But then also it can happen over a period of time, and that is the fourth dimension. Looking at conceptual models, uh, when we think of um, wind flowing over the ground, um, eventually it does break down into turbulent flow. If it's flowing nice and smooth, that's what we call laminar flow. But at a point, it breaks down, and it's no longer laminar, and it's turbulent. And that transition from laminar to turbulent flow depends on a lot of factors. And these factors are all interrelated. You can't just isolate one, but they're all interrelated. So, of course, wind speed, the greater the wind speed, the more it will break into uh, turbulent flow. Surface roughness, meaning that um, if uh, the ground has irregularities, that tends to cause uh, a disruption in laminar flow resulting in eddies. Also the air density is a factor. The stability of the atmosphere, uh, atmospheres that are uh, less stable tend to break down more easily. And then finally viscosity, in other words the ability for air molecules to stick to the ground. And then there are other factors also. We'll discuss all these um, in our uh, talk here in the next couple of weeks about uh, different types of turbulence. So uh, you can visualize uh, turbulent flow as uh, either being a wave or eddies and vortices. A wave, as you probably can imagine, is just a, a, a regular oscillation of the wind. And as the aircraft flies through uh, this wave, it experiences updrafts and downdrafts. So eddies are little vortices that are embedded in the wind flow. And the size of the, of the eddies varies. The eddies move along with the wind, with the mean wind flow. And these are what cause gusts in the atmosphere. Not only vertical gusts as the aircraft experiences, but also horizontal gusts. In other words, they produce the variation in the wind speed, what we call gusts. So uh, it, you, could, you can average the wind speed. The wind is, is always fluctuating, but we can come up with an average, and meteorologists think any variation from the average is turbulence. As far as the scale of turbulence, this diagram shows along the vertical axis the horizontal dimension of all sorts of eddies. And along the bottom is the time scale for the turbulence. In other words, how long it lasts. So we can break turbulence down into different scales depending upon the size of the, the eddy. Um, we can have macro scale, meso scale, or micro scale uh, types of eddies. Macro scale eddies are larger ones such as uh, hurricanes and typhoons. Mesoscale are uh, someplace a little bit smaller. Uh, typically those eddies are things that we visualize like, um, believe it or not, uh, Chinooks or um, uh, mountain waves or things like that. 
And then micro scale are really, really small scale phenomena, such as just a gust moving downwind of a building. So the turbulence that affects an aircraft typically occurs on the micro scale. And these are smaller scale phenomena, things like clear air turbulence, that's what CAT is, thermals. You guys probably are familiar with thermals if you're flying around during the summertime. And even uh, the downwind of buildings, you get uh, little eddies that affect aircraft performance. The uh, time scale, or in other words, the lifetime of um, these uh, uh, eddies, uh, these phenomena, depends upon their size. Bigger things tend to last for longer periods of time. For example, a hurricane will last maybe five or six days. Whereas smaller scale eddies, um, such as um, a gust or a uh, turbulence downwind of a building, will only last minutes, if even that, perhaps maybe seconds. So you can see that there's a cascade of energy from bigger sizes to smaller sizes. In other words, these really big weather phenomena, uh, such as hurricanes and typhoons, will eventually break down into smaller eddies, uh, such as you know, thunderstorms, which break down into even smaller skiddies, uh, eddies on a smaller scale, such as uh, thermals or uh, just gusts. And then eventually, the micro scale breaks down into molecular motion. This was theorized by a famous uh, mathematician and meteorologist. His name was Elif Richardson, and he wrote a poem about it. And here's his poem. The poem goes, Big worlds have little worlds that feed on their velocity, and little worlds have lesser worlds, and so on, to viscosity. In other words, uh, all energy eventually breaks down to molecular motion. The size that affects aircraft, you know, we looked at all the different sizes of eddies, from hurricanes down to little thermals. And the ones that affect aircraft are typically on the size range of between 50 to 1500 feet in diameter. The next uh, PowerPoint and video will look at how turbulence affect aircraft.